Glad you could join me again today. We're going to continue talking about Ephesians. Uh, last visit, we talked about happy families. And today, we're going to look at God's instruction for a happy workplace as he comes to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. And it reads, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing um, any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So, a servant. A servant, by definition, is someone that's owned by another. In Bible times, it was very common to have a servant, and even today, in many countries, people still have servants. But in our Western culture, this idea is not so acceptable, nor is it common. Most of the people that serve us are paid employees, maybe not even from ourselves, but by, by someone else. But most people are now paid, not just uh, taken as a servant. But let's look at the instruction here in Ephesians and look at the traits that God says that a good employee, if we're going to look at it that way in our Western culture, what a good employee should be like. The first thing it says here is that they would be obedient to their boss. It says, servants, be obedient unto them that are your masters. So that means to follow instructions, doesn't it? It means to be trusted, to complete tasks the way they've been uh, instructed the way the job requires. It, it's an idea that you know you can trust this person. That's the kind of employee you want to be. The Bible says to do these things with fear and trembling, meaning being respectful and mindful of the position that you have, not, not a big mouth that's going around spouting what, what they would do if, if they were boss, but realizing that their job is a blessing and they need to keep it by the way that they act. Then it said, in singleness of heart as unto Christ. And that means about keeping our priorities, focusing on the job at hand and with the idea of doing everything that we do, even our daily job as unto Christ, because this job is a gift and God will honor it if we do so in that kind of a mindset. Then it said, not with eye service as men pleasers. And I think of this two ways. It, it can mean not being two-faced, you know what I mean? Where they speak nicely about someone when they're in front of them and then they speak evil against them when they're behind their back. A, a good employee doesn't act like that. The other way I thought of is only working when someone in authority is watching. And that is a very immature attitude to have, an immature way to act. And it does not bring happiness to the team. There's a lot of politics and maneuvering that goes on inside the job place, and the good Christian employee does not mingle with these things. He doesn't participate, but he keeps his eyes on the job consistently and faithfully, no matter whether someone is looking or not, because he is doing everything in his job as unto Christ, because he is the servant of Christ. And he does the will of God from a good heart, regardless of the politics that are going on around him. He maintains his integrity. He's the same in front of you as he is behind his back. And verse 7 says, doing good will uh, in service as to the Lord and not unto men. And how can he do that? Well, I think it's because he knows that he serves a higher authority and he lives for more than just that weekly pay packet. He claims the promise of verse 8, where it says the same shall he receive of the Lord. He's going to receive the same that he gives out. And that's the concept of measurement. We see a similar uh, scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verse 2. It says, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So you're going to receive whatever you give out. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. So what we do is going to come back to us. That's another idea of measurement. Psalm 37 and verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. So the good employee knows that there are unwritten benefits to being a faithful and trustworthy employee, and that God is the, ultimately the one who rewards. So his job, or 
our job is a way of honoring God and placing us on the path to receive God's blessing if we receive if we behave ourselves wisely. So if you've ever worked a job, you know that this sort of employee is a rare treasure. Uh, employers seek to hold on to people who are obedient and honest and conscientious and faithful workers. And as a child of God, this should be the description of us, not only when we do our earthly jobs, but how we direct our lives in service toward the Lord, even outside of the job place. For when we do, we can expect God to keep his promise, that promise of blessing and reward according to the measure of how we live our life. When we look at verse 9, I want you to listen for the second full phrase. It reads, And ye masters, now we're going to talk to the employer. And ye masters, here's the phrase, do the same things unto them. Forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is the respect of persons with him. Did you hear it? Do the same things unto them. A God-honoring master or employer is also honest and conscientious, and he's good toward his employees. The Bible is quick to add that little phrase, forbearing, threatening. And that means to not bully or to uh, torment your workers with threats. And why? God even tells you as an employer why you should not do that. It says, because you have a master in heaven to whom you will answer. He does not bully or threaten you. So he asks you to love as he's loved you and to forgive as he's forgiven you. That's just what we've already been talking about the last few weeks in Ephesians 4.32 and 5.2. We are to forgive and to love even as God has done that for us. And it applies the same way inside the workplace. And the other reason is that there's no respecter of persons with God. He loves the servant and the master equally, placing responsibility for a good work uh, on both parties so that you create a good team. And that's like a spiritual teamsters union, you might say, united in purpose and expectation. It reminds me of something um, uh, called Ava. You might not have ever heard it, but I've used it many times when I teach on marriage or talk about the quality of the sexes or of race. And here's the idea that we each, husband and wife, child and parent, black and white, employee, employer, master, servant, each of us have letter A, equal access, equal access to the Father by prayer and through our position in Christ. And letter V, we have equal value. God loves each individual equally and desires to use each of us inside his design in Christ. And the last A, equal accountability. We will all stand to give account. No one escapes, whether we're an employer or an employee, whether we're a master or a servant, whether we're a husband or a wife, we all have equal access. So we go to work tomorrow on the grounds of equal access, equal value, and equal accountability. And we serve our master in heaven and our employer on earth as unto the Lord. Because Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I hope you have a happy home life. I hope you have a, hope, a happy workplace as well. See you next week. Music